Accountability Institute president and author of Clinton Cash, Peter Schweitzer. Good to see you, Peter. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Maria. Well, obviously, your book has been a, a, a big bestseller and a great success. I want to get your take on the comments from uh, Hillary Clinton just there. What do you think, where do you think we are in terms of this investigation on the email? And then, of course, there's the foundation donations as well. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Maria. This is a dual track investigation. One is on the emails and the questioning of the handling of classified material. Uh, we know from some of the great reporting at Fox and elsewhere that that investigation has actually expanded. They've added people uh, in recent months. Um, uh, clearly, the evidence is the Washington Post has reported is that she has been contacted by the FBI and that her aides are talking to the FBI. Uh, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for her to sort of s sweep this under the carpet. That that's clearly the Clinton strategy. And, you know, to the point that she made about Trump not being asked tough questions, uh, that's certainly an open, uh, open debate. But there's no question that she has not been asked very difficult question as it relates to the foundation or a whole host of other activities. What, what do you think, what, what would you say is the most devastating allegation in your book? What do you think is the most impactful here? as we go into the next six months into the general election. I mean, if we were to hear from the FBI uh, that she actually did do something wrong, which we have not heard that yet on the email scandal, right. and how does that differ from the foundation uh, allegations? Uh, that's a great question, Maria. Uh, the foundation uh, allegations are really about pay to play, uh, that you follow the money. Uh, and in Clinton Cash, I mean, there are a couple of things really briefly. One is this uh, nuclear deal involving the Russian government, $145 million to the Clinton Foundation, this small Canadian uranium company. That deal had to be approved by the federal government, including the State Department. Uh, the New York Times had two Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporters do a 4,000 uh, word front page piece based on the book confirming everything. She's never been asked a question about that in any sort of serious, meaningful way. The second question I would ask is, why is it that your husband's speaking fees went up dramatically from overseas entities after you became Secretary of State? Bill Clinton was making about $175,000 per speech before she became Secretary of State. Suddenly, magically, he's pulling in $500,000, $750,000. And these are from governments and corporations that had business before the State Department that I argue got favorable treatment after Bill Clinton was paid for those speeches. Wow, that's She's never been asked about those either. That's pretty extraordinary. So, so we know that he was getting paid from governments that she was actually talking to uh, and doing business with uh, as Secretary of State on a government level. That's right. So, for example, Nigeria. Bill Clinton had never been given a paid speech by the, by the government of Nigeria before. After she becomes Secretary of State, and by the way, as Secretary of State, she has to sign off that the Nigerian government is dealing with corruption for them to continue to get hundreds of millions of dollars U.S. foreign aid. After she becomes Secretary of State, Bill Clinton gets two paid speeches for $700,000 apiece. Same thing, you could look at the government, uh, sorry, the uh, company of Ericsson which was having big problems with the State Department over telecom sales to Iran. Bill Clinton gets paid $750,000 for a single speech, his biggest payday ever. He'd been never, never before been paid for a speech by Erickson. Nine days later, Erickson gets favorable action from the State Department. This is These are questions stuff. that need to be yeah. answered. Well, let me ask you this, because I want to get your take on, on what DNC Communications Officer Luis Miranda said. Yesterday, when I had him on my Sunday program about voter turnout, he says it's not going to be uh, an issue this election. Listen to this, and I want to get your reaction to it. If you look at the exit polls for Republicans, half of their party uh, feels, more than half, feels that their primary has been divisive. So where we're seeing 75 percent and majorities who would support either candidate, you have Republicans where uh, they just don't want to support their front runner. Uh, you know, 40 percent of voters in one of the states actually felt that a Donald Trump presidency would be dangerous. We happen to agree with that. Uh, and a third would rather stay home, not vote, right. or vote for an alternative rather than support him. So I think we, we have a situation where uh, the voter turnout isn't going to be what defines the election. So uh, what you're saying in terms of these, con these conflicts of interest, Peter, is that going to affect voter turnout? You know, we had Daryl Issa on the program a couple of weeks ago, and he basically said what he's expecting is the email scandal to be concluded in the next couple of months, but then the foundation investigation, the, inf and the investigation there may not be concluded until later in the year, maybe even after the election. 
So is it actually going to yeah, have no, an I'm, impact? I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the same thing. Look, I think there's no question that if you look at uh, the posture that the Democrats are taking, they are going to make this about Donald Trump. They're not going to make this election about Hillary Clinton. And if you look at the Trump campaign, they've made it pretty clear they're going to look at Clinton corruption as the main focus. So it's going to be a very, very ugly primary. A lot of it is going to be mobilizing base of supporters who don't like the other candidate. Uh, and I think we are in for a fascinating six months. For sure. Peter, great work. Thanks so much. We look forward to uh, seeing the film, uh, Clinton Cash, now a movie hitting Cannes, uh, the Cannes Film Festival, later this month. We'll see you soon, sir. Thank you. Thank